In the previous video, we looked at the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases, but also highlighted some of the problems with Arrhenius's definition. These problems were remedied by Johannes Bronsted and Martin Lowry. They proposed their own definitions of acids and bases. Instead of saying that acids are anything with H+, Bronsted and Lowry say that acids donate a proton in a reaction. Now the wording is different, but this is actually fundamentally the same as the Arrhenius definition because a hydrogen plus ion, an H plus ion, is a proton. Remember, a hydrogen atom is just a proton with an electron spinning around it. So if you make the H plus ion, you've removed the electron and are just left with a proton. So an H plus ion is a proton. So just as before, when Arrhenius said HCl and HNO3 would be acids, Bronsted and Lowry would agree. The HCl can donate an H plus, which is a proton, the HNO3 can donate an H+, which is a proton. The difference comes with their definition of a base. Bronston and Lowry define bases as anything that can accept a proton. So the hydroxide ion can accept a proton. If you add an H+, to hydroxide, you get water. So the Bronston and Lowry definition encapsulates the Arrhenius definition. The Bronsted and Lowry definition, however, expands upon Arrhenius because it points out that NH3, ammonia, can also be a base. NH3 can accept a proton and become NH4+, the ammonium ion. Arrhenius would not call this a base. Bronsted and Lowry do. So let's take a look at what a Bronsted and Lowry acid-base reaction would be. Let's take hydrochloric acid and combine it with ammonia. Now we know hydrochloric acid is an acid and we now know that ammonia is a base. So what Bronsted and Lowry say is that the acid will donate a proton. So an H plus is going to leave the acid and go to the NH3. Well, if you remove an H plus from HCl, you get Cl minus. And if you add an H plus to NH3, you're gonna get NH4 plus. So again, HCl is the acid because it donates a proton, NH3 is a base because it accepts a proton. These reactions look different than the Arrhenius reactions because Arrhenius reactions were double replacement reactions and we always made water. We also said that Arrhenius reactions make a salt. The bronsted lowry reactions make a salt as well. They have ions in solution just like Arrhenius, but there's no water made. So in this case, the salt would be the combination of the two ions left, the ammonium and the chloride. So the salt formed by this Bronsted and Lowry reaction is ammonium chloride. We also highlighted in the last video this double arrow. We talked about how some of these reactions can go forward and some of these reactions can go reverse. Well, in the reversed reactions, we look at what are called conjugates. We look at a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. So for this reaction to reverse itself, well, we have to move the proton back where it came from. The NH4 plus would give up a proton and that proton would travel to the Cl minus in order to make your HCl and your NH3 again. So the NH4 plus would be donating a proton. That would be an acid. The Cl minus would be accepting a proton. That would be a base. So the acid and base in the reverse reactions are called conjugates. So the conjugate acid in this case is NH4 plus and the conjugate base is Cl minus. When you reverse the reaction, you reverse the process. So hopefully it makes sense that the acid turns into the conjugate base, the HCl turned into Cl minus, and the base turns into the conjugate acid, the NH3 turned into NH4 plus. Let's try this again with another reaction. Let's simply look at what happens when we put HCl, hydrochloric acid, in water. The name gives it away. Hydrochloric acid must be an acid which means water in this case must be acting as a base. So if HCl is the acid, the HCl is going to donate a proton, which is going to go over to water, and water would accept the proton, making it a base. Well, if the HCl loses its proton, just like in the last reaction, it turns into Cl minus. And if H2O gains a proton, it turns into this hydronium ion, which we saw in the last video. What are the conjugate acids and conjugate bases? Well, if we look at the reverse reaction, hydronium ion has to donate a proton. So the hydronium ion would be the conjugate acid and the chloride ion would be the conjugate base. Which hopefully makes sense because the hydronium ion was our definition of an acid in the last video. 
Let's look at one more of these. Let's take a look at what happens when we put ammonia with water. Now we know that ammonia is a base. So that means water must be acting as an acid. If water is acting as an acid, it's going to have to donate its proton to ammonia. Which means that we're going to make ammonium and then the water is going to be left as hydroxide. The conjugate acid and conjugate base. Well, if we're looking at the reverse reaction, the H plus is going to have to leave the ammonium to go to the hydroxide. So that makes the ammonium the conjugate acid and the hydroxide the conjugate base. Again, I hope that makes sense because we used hydroxide as our old definition of a base. Well, then something strange just happened. We saw two reactions where water acted as an acid in the first reaction, but acted as a base in the second reaction. Water is amphoteric. The word amphoteric means something can act as an acid or as a base. The word amphoteric does not mean neutral. Yes, water is neutral, but that doesn't mean it's amphoteric. There are plenty of things that are amphoteric that have a pH lower than 7 or higher than 7. The word amphoteric does not mean neutral. It just means that it can accept a proton or donate a proton. One last thought before we wrap up this video. Some acids that we encounter are polyprotic acids. So poly meaning many, protic referring to protons. So these are acids that contain more than one proton. In the last video, we looked at an example with sulfuric acid. H2SO4 is a polyprotic acid. To be specific, it is a diprotic acid. It has two protons. If you mix H2SO4 with water, the first proton can leave the H2SO4 attached to the water and leave this hydrogen sulfate or this bisulfate ion. And then the water will accept a proton and turn into the hydronium ion. This bisulfate ion, however, has another proton to give. So if we mix that bisulfate ion with more water, the hydrogen can leave the bisulfate ion and attach to this water, leaving you with sulfate and the hydronium ion. Let me just point out one last thing here. In this second reaction, the bisulfate ion HSO4 is donating a proton. It is an acid. In the first reaction, the bisulfate ion is the conjugate base. It would accept a proton from hydronium to turn back into H2SO4. So in the first reaction, it's a conjugate base. In the second reaction, it's an acid. This bisulfate ion is amphoteric. It can act as an acid or a base.